One of the most popular effects in Corel Draw is the ability to put text on a path and there's various ways you can do that. So let's start by looking at how we can put it on using the menus. So I've already created a couple of rings and I've got a logo here. I want to put, put some text down here at the bottom in between the two rings. So let's go ahead and type out our word. So now that we have our text, if we want, we can format it immediately before we put it on there, or we can always put it on there later. I'm going to go ahead and format it right now. So let's go ahead and choose a Frutiger font, and let's say we want it to be 36 points. That looks about right for what I want. So what I'm going to do is select the text. I'm going to select the inner ring. And in the text menu, I'm going to select Fit Text to Path. And you'll see that automatically puts the text on the very top. That's not where I want it, but we'll get it to where we want in a second. So I'm just going to click right on the text, and you'll notice a preview as I drag it. The red line you see means that it is snapping to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it right there. And you're going to say, wait a second, it's upside down. I agree completely, it is upside down. We'll get that fixed in a second. The other way to get text on the path is to simply type it directly on the path. This is my preferred way of working because it eliminates the extra step of having to select something from the menu. So we'll grab our text cursor and normally you'll see it is a crosshair with the letter A. As I come to a path, you'll see it changes to an I bar and then the A is on a squiggly. If I go inside, it's going to change to what I like to call A, B in a box. We definitely don't want A, B in a box. We want A on a squiggly. And I actually want it on this line. So I'll click right there. We'll type the word graphics. And I went ahead and selected all the text. And let's go ahead and select the same font as we did before. So to me, that eliminates one step by typing it directly on the path. And I like that. So this one is very easy to place. I'll just go ahead and drag it up a little bit. And you'll see it is approximately halfway between the lines. That looks good. Now let's talk some more about this one and about text on a path in general. So I've selected this text on a path. I control clicked on this. If I want to select just the text and not the path, I would control click on it again. The first choice on the property bar is how the text is oriented. And I'll go through each one. So as I go to the second one, you'll notice there's no change to the text whatsoever. The only difference between the top one and the second one is if you have distorted the text in some way, one of them will maintain the distortions, the other one won't. The third choice, as you see, kind of skews the text inwards. And it also moved it up a little bit, which we could fix. Uh, it, it does work for some projects, but I would say this is one you'll use only occasionally. The next one I've yet to find a use for. So I'll show it to you. You see it kind of distorts the text in a crazy way. I've never found a place where it was handy. And then the last one does not rotate the text along with the path. And once again, I don't remember ever using this. So this one, I use a small percentage of the time. And the top two, it's kind of divided. And it depends on if you need something distorted on the path. One of them works with it, one of them won't. The next choice is how far away the text is from the path and you'll see it's 0.13 inches. Now keep in mind that's from this path to where the text is. So if I want it to be a little bit farther away I could adjust this number. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is for now because I know we're going to be moving it in a second. This shows the offset and it's measuring from the top center of the path to where it is. So what I would suggest is be really careful about changing this number on the property bar. Instead, if you've dragged it into the correct position, you won't have to worry about it. 
Now these are the two settings that are really going to come into play because it is upside down. So if I click the first one, it's going to mirror the text horizontally. And you're going to say, wait a second, it's still upside down. And I agree, but it did flip it around a little bit. And this one is going to mirror it vertically. So now it looks right, but in doing so, it moved up a little bit. So I'm going to click on this text. Oops, I accidentally grabbed too much, so we'll undo. So control click on the text, there we go. And now I can drag it down until it's approximately halfway between the two lines. There's also a setting here that helps keep things constrained, and that's tick snapping. You can either turn it on or off. It's what's helping us to center it, and as it moves up and down, it follows the rings exactly 0.125 inches apart. You can change that number if you want. When the text is selected by itself, you can choose a different font, a different size, bold, italic, or you can change any of the text properties. So lots and lots of choices. Now the other thing that I want to point out, along with this book, we created a toolbar that you might find handy. So I'm going to right click over here to get my list of toolbars and select text on a path unleashed. For those of you who go back several versions of Corel Draw, you might remember things worked a little bit differently. So we cry, tried to create a custom toolbar that works as close as possible to the old way of doing things for those of you who prefer that way. It should have been installed when you installed this book. If not, you can simply import it into your workspace. We think you might like it. So let me go ahead and close that, and now you've seen the basics of getting text onto a circle.